I don't want the raisin heads. Why did you say that? I just eat around them. I don't understand you. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Benching with Babish, where this week I need something a little easier. So we're exploring popcorn, how to make theater-style popcorn at home, along with, of course, Paul Reiser's favorite treat, raisinets. Now, making these from scratch might seem like an absolute waste of time, but it gives us an opportunity to learn about tempering chocolate, a skill that I've never really been very good at. But this is the show where you and I learn together. So we're going to melt some chocolate, two-thirds of our chocolate, in a double boiler until it reaches 115 degrees Fahrenheit, at which point we're going to add the remainder of our our chocolate. This is called seeding the chocolate. I'm not entirely sure why. That's going to bring the temperature of the chocolate down to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to put it back on the boiler and bring it back up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know why we do this stuff, but this is science, so that means it's smarter than me. To test to see if your chocolate is tempered, take a little bit on the end of a knife, put it in the fridge, and see if it comes out smooth, glossy, and non-streaky. Now it's time to lovingly, individually coat each one of our raisins in our tempered chocolate. This should be about the point when you start asking questions like, why did I do this to myself, but just push those feelings down and set those aside to harden. There is an easier and more effective way to temper chocolate, and that is with a sous vide. This method comes courtesy of J. Kenji Lopez Alt. Just like most great cooking tutorials, bring your water to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, add the chocolate, chopped up or in chip form like this, and allow to circulate for five minutes or until completely melted. We're then going to bring the temperature down by adding a little bit of ice back down to 81 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we're going to bring the temperature back up again to 90 90 degrees, massaging the chocolate as we go. Don't be shy, this is going to bring you and the chocolate closer together. Very carefully dry the bag off because water is the enemy of tempered chocolate, snip off the edge, and squeeze the desired amount into a bowl, placing the extra back in the water bath so it stays melted. How cool is that? Now I'm curious about how other dried fruit will react in this scenario, so I'm starting with some dried blueberries, and then some dried sour cherries with what you can see is a much more sophisticated chopstick dipping method. Continue to deny your emotions as you realize that you could get any one of these at your nearest grocery store as we dip some cranberries in the chocolate, making chocolate-covered craisins, and feel just a little bit better about the ordeal when you finally scrape all your perfect little chocolates off the parchment paper and realize that you just made homemade raisinets that actually taste really good. It's a little-known fact that milk chocolate tastes like garbage. Now, how do we make movie theater style popcorn at home? Well, the answer is simple. The sinister sounding popcorn additive Flavicol. This stuff is available for about 10 bucks on Amazon and will last forever. Now, we're going to start with three tablespoons of coconut oil in a large stock pot using a few kernels of popcorn as our temperature indicators. When one pops, it's ready to be taken off the heat. Add a third of a cup of popcorn kernels and a heaping teaspoon of Flavicol. Give it a good mix to make sure that everything is well combined. Cover and let rest for 30 seconds off the heat before returning to the heat and shaking gently until every kernel is popped. Whoop, almost every kernel. Pour into a bowl and butter as desired. Now this worked pretty well, but there were a few unpopped kernels and it's kind of easy to burn if you're not careful. So next up, we're going nerdy with Alton Brown's big stainless steel bowl method. Again, we're starting with three tablespoons of coconut oil using a couple kernels to determine when our oil is ready. Adding a third of a cup, adding our flavor call, bring it back to the heat after letting it rest for 30 seconds and this time covering with how? Covering with aluminum foil that we're going to poke a few holes in with some scissors. This will help steam escape, resulting in lighter, crispier popcorn. Keep it shaken while it pops, and I gotta say, hats off to Alton Brown. Like, every single kernel was popped, and absolutely none were burned. This can be chalked up to the concave shape of the bowl, keeping the popped kernels away from the heat. There's only one more method to try, and that's the kind of novelty, overpriced, but fun to say, whirly pop version. And if we're talking about movie theater accuracy, this is going to bring us the closest. It has the same stirring mechanism to keep the kernels moving and prevent them from burning. And just like Alton Brown's method, results in perfect popcorn. Now it's time, at long last, for a flavor comparison between commercially available $35 a box at the theater chocolate-covered raisins and my homemade gourmand, painstakingly crafted... Ugh, that's... that's not very good. The dark chocolate is almost offensively sour and clashes with the buttery richness of the popcorn and kind of renders all my other experiments useless. The chocolate-covered blueberries were really good on their own, but as a whole, this was a huge waste of time. But hey, at least we learned how to make movie theater popcorn at home, right? I love the branding on here. It's, it's unbelievable. Like, it looks like they haven't changed it since 1955. For additional profits, consider snow cones. Cotton candy can make plenty of plus profits for you too. 
Your sales will go up as much as 25%. What do you treat popcorn as the specialty of the house? <laughs> Gold medal. Purveyors of fine concession products for over 500 years.